Removing gasket material is a serious pain in the ass. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that if you've ever done any kind of engine work. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I have learned over the years and you can use it too if you want. All right guys, so we got case halves all over the place. Um, so this is our clutch cover for our TRX 250R. Uh, for those that are new to the channel, we are building a motocross 250R right now. If you guys want, definitely hit that subscribe button and check it out. And here's one of our case halves. Now I've already gone ahead and prepared these cases before we send them out for vapor blasting to DBC Racing, um, just to show you what it's gonna look like. But I'm sure if you guys have pulled apart an engine before, you usually have some really nasty, cruddy gasket material. And I figured as I was making this video, I would um, clean up the, the clutch cover just to show you guys how to do it. I really should have waited and done the case halves to show you, but this will be the same process. Just getting all this junk off of here. It can be a pain in the ass and it can be time consuming. It's just one of those things that I kind of don't look forward to doing <laughs> whenever I'm building a motor. So I've learned a couple tricks over the years that have made this process a lot easier. And we'll go ahead and do our water pump cover too. The gasket's actually still stuck on there, but we'll take care of all that. So we've got our stator cover here too. And I'm gonna be sending all these covers out to DBC Racing as well for vapor blasting. And that's why we're gonna get this all prepared. Now this one was pretty cruddy, especially on the case half, um, but on the stator side, it's cruddy too. So you can see there's some gaskets still stuck on here. And I think what the case was is somebody put Somebody didn't feel like cleaning the gasket surfaces, so they just caked on RTV, and then it looked like some, they pulled it apart again and did the same thing again, and it was really thick. I mean, there was just tons of RTV, old gaskets. Some of it was half ripped away and then filled in with RTV. You're just setting yourself up for look for leaks and bad tolerances, and plus it just looked like crap. I mean, there was RTV just like sticking out, hanging out the edges of the motor, and it just it looks lousy like that. There's nothing like a fresh build where you can see just a little bit of fresh gasket. You know it's a freshly built motor. I like that look anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the way that I used to do it. And there's no problem with the old method that I use. And, um, and in fact, this is probably a safer method really. Typically I would use a regular razor, a new razor. That's really important because if you're not using a new razor, even if it's still kind of sharp, you're gonna struggle quite a bit. So a new razor is definitely important. You can pick up razors pretty much anywhere. Um, go to Walmart and pick them up super cheap. And um, I would kind of just run around the edges and get the gaskets off. You can see it works pretty nice. Um, and that is still a part of the method. You do want to get the big chunks and stuff off with a razor. But I used to do that. And then I would take some steel wool and go over everything. And that'll take off like this fine stuff. The steel wool will take that right off. So the razor method is not a bad way, but you do have to watch because you can score or gouge the cases. It's really easy to do. If you're not going on a nice flat plane and you go downwards a little bit too much or you go side to side, you can actually cut little pieces of aluminum out. It's crazy how sharp these razors are. Um, so we will still use the razor, like I said, just to get off the big stuff. And then I will show you what I've learned to get all of the rest of this crap off. And it's a breeze it takes like two seconds all right so let's first see if we can just pick some of this gasket off sometimes it'll just peel right away All right, so the majority of the gasket material has been removed from this water pump cover. But you can see this nasty stuff, and that's there is a roughness to that. You can feel it, and we definitely don't want that on there. So you could take some steel wool and get all that stuff off. That's a nice, safe method. Or you could take a piece of sandpaper and uh, glue it to a piece of flat steel or um, glass. And you lay the uh, part down and surface it. That's another way you can do it, but that's very time consuming. So I'm gonna show you a quicker method. We'll clean up our stator cover. You can see this one's pretty much down to the bare metal, the razor. If you really dig, uh, the razor will take a little bit more off, but that's when it gets a little bit dangerous and you might score up the metal. And a lot of times this RTV just peels right away. And it is a good habit guys to not cut towards yourself. I'm a little bit, um, restricted here because I have to uh, work my way around the camera, but you never want to 
It's really not a good idea to come this way towards yourself because if you slip, you can cut yourself really easy. So this is a good example of a really stubborn gasket. You can see all the leftover material on here. That's the stuff that would be a real pain in the ass to get off. All right, so we have our gasket surfaces about as clean as we're gonna get them with the razor. And the magic tool we're gonna be using today is a die grinder. So you guys may have seen some other guys use this same exact technique. I can't take full credit for this. Um, but when I did discover it, I started using it. And man, I will never go back to using the razor blade method because this is just so much easier. Now I do wanna make a disclaimer before I go any further. This is a semi-dangerous method because just like using an impact gun when you're disassembling or assembling anything, it's, it's possible and it's pretty easy to screw things up. So if you go too hard with this, you could destroy your case surfaces and have to get whole new cases. So it's definitely something to take into account. There's definitely a finesse to using this technique, but if you do it right, it's going to save you so much time and it's going to make removing gasket material so easy. So the die grinder that I use is an Ingersoll Rand. I think I paid about 50 bucks for this new on Amazon. And then of course you have to get one of these attachments and they use these little things. I call them cookie wheels. Um, it's basically an abrasive, an abrasive pad. It's like a scotch bright, and um, they come in different levels of abrasiveness, just like sandpaper would. Um, typically green is the softest uh, for whatever reason, this kit that I bought, the red one seems to be the softest. So that's the one that I'm using for the gaskets. You don't want to go heavy on these things because like I said, it's kind of touchy. Um, if you, if you really go hard on these, it, it'll actually take the aluminum down. It can take steel down. It's almost like a sandpaper. Uh, but just as long as you do it just gently and nice and flat, you shouldn't have any problems. So these are fairly cheap tools. Um, if you're doing motors all the time, it's definitely worth the investment. The one thing is with this Ingersoll Rand, you do need an air compressor. Now, if you don't have an air compressor, they do have electric um, die grinders. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, you could actually put this in a drill if you really wanted to. Uh, I don't really recommend that because I think you get a lot more control with these, um, but they do make electric ones. I know that Milwaukee makes one and it's pretty expensive. It's like 200 bucks. And I'll have all these tools linked in the description below. Um, the Milwaukee one, like I said, is expensive. That's the only one I can really recommend because I actually have hands-on experience with it and I know it's a really good tool. However, I might be able to find a cheaper die grinder, an electric one. If I can find that, I'll link that in the description below, uh, but I'm not going to recommend that because I haven't actually tried it, although it may work just fine. So these pads just screw right in, makes it really easy to replace them once they're worn out. And essentially what we're going to do is just go along the case surfaces and just you don't want to not not going to press any pressure or go on an angle, anything like that. You want to keep it nice and flat and you just kind of, as it's going, you'll see, I just kind of skim over as this thing's going, obviously. And um, it's going to take everything right off, but it's really important to keep this nice and flat. If you go too hard, you're going to go, you're going to, you're going to destroy your cases. <laughs> so just be really careful. All right. So the first one we'll do is the stator cover. Um, it's going to be a little weird for me because the tripod is actually right next to me. So I kind of have to come in on an angle here. Um, but typically I would go flat um, and just kind of go right on top of it. But since we have a small case right here or um, cover, we should be able to just hold it and I'll be able to show you exactly how to do it. So like I said, just keep this nice and flat and we're just going to kind of skim over and you'll see it's going to clean this stuff up. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> So you can see it takes that shit right off. Now on some areas like right here, you can see there's little imperfections. Don't go crazy coming back. And it's, it's easy to get into a habit of, you know, turning the tool on its side and trying to dig in the edge just to get that little bit out. Just, just leave it. Trust me. <laughs> if you can, you can go back and just touch it a couple times. You might be able to get it off, but that's where you really have to be careful because you're going to create an uneven surface. And you may be able to bring it back to life by surfacing this on a piece of sandpaper, but you don't want to get this thing out of spec. So any kind of stubborn stuff, I don't recommend um, trying to hammer it away with this thing.
All right, so you can see that cleaned up really easily. Um, realistically, this takes like 30 seconds uh, if I wasn't filming it. Now, a good indicator that you've done a good job is that you've got somewhat sharp edges. You don't want the edges to be rounded. That means you're, you're not keeping your tool nice and flat. So you'll feel kind of like a lip on here. That usually means you've done a good job and you're applying just the right amount of pressure. All right, let's see how this works on this one that's got this stubborn stuff. Now keep in mind as I'm doing this, guys, I'm not applying pressure. I'm just kind of skimming over the top. So if I apply pressure, this stuff will come right off, but then you risk hitting the cases or making them uneven. So it may look like I'm kind of going crazy on this, but I'm not applying any pressure at all. So you can see that one took a little bit of work, uh, but we still have our sharp edges. I think we're just fine. And um, like I said before, it may have looked like I went a little crazy on this, but I'm barely applying any pressure. That's the name of the game, guys. Take your time and you won't screw anything up. Now for something smaller like this, I'm probably gonna have a little bit more control um, with the buffing wheel. So I'll show you a different tool that I have. So that other method would work just fine for this water pump cover. But since I have this abrasive uh, pad right here, I'm gonna use it because I think it'll be a lot easier um, you can pick these up pretty cheap too if you do have a buffing motor. Um, they're on Amazon. I think this was 15 bucks for this pad, but it should last you a long time. It's the same kind of material that's on those cookie wheels. It's just going to be a little bit easier to control and um, it should get the job done really nicely. So that one was a little bit tough there. Um, this probably isn't quite as abrasive as the cookie wheel. And if you look at this aluminum, there's actually some, some damage to it. This is an older piece. Um, this came off in 1987. I believe this is the original cover, but it cleaned up fine. And this will work, this will not leak. And we're also gonna surface this stuff. So we'll probably be able to get all those imperfections out. Give you guys a look at our surfaces. You can see they're not perfect right here. There's a little spot that's scored. Uh, that's most likely from another time that this cover was removed, but that's okay. The way that this is right now, a uh, fresh gasket on here, this shouldn't have any leaks. <laughs> Give you a look at our water pump cover again. And of course the stator cover. Okay, so these gasket surfaces are ready to go. And realistically, the condition that these are in right now, you could put this motor back together with some fresh gaskets and it shouldn't have any leaks. Now there is one step further that you can go that's gonna ensure that your surfaces are completely flat and it's called surfacing. Now I'm going to be doing that with all these cases and covers. However, I'm waiting until they come back from vapor blasting from DBC Racing. Now, if you wanna see a good video on that right now, uh, Cameron Niemela just put out a video, I think it was last week, and um, he shows an excellent process. It's super cheap to do. Essentially, you're putting down uh, sandpaper on a perfectly flat surface, taking your covers and rotating them on there and it's going to make them completely flat and ensure that you don't have any leaks at all. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Again, I just want to stress to be super careful if you use this process. Once you get the hang of it, you're never going to go back. I'm telling you, it's going to save you a ton of time. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely check out the 250R series. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to give me that thumbs up. I appreciate all you guys. Have a killer week, and I will see you Friday.